The desert wind kicked up sand like it had a bone to pick with the whole damn planet. My crew and I, we hunkered down in our tank, the metal creaking like an old man's bones. We weren't newcomers. We've seen battles that make lesser men piss themselves, but Veda, Veda was something else. The intel said the 7th Armored Division was itching for a brawl, and we were the unlucky sons of bitches picked to give it to them. It was always the same routine. Prep the gear, check the ammo, run through the checklist like our lives depended on it. Because, well, they did. Prep the rounds, check the targeting systems. I barked over the comms. My crew moved like they were born in that tank. Garcia punched numbers into the console like he was playing a damn video game. Maria, she was double-checking the ammo count, eyes sharp as a hawk. And Jackson, well, Jackson was silent as the grave, fingers dancing over the controls like he was born to pilot this beast. The sky was a dull orange, the kind of color that tells you the sun's about to set, but the heat, it never relented. Sweat dripped down my forehead, mixing with the sand of the desert that seemed to find its way into every crevice. ETA to contact? I asked, voice calm as I could muster. Jackson's voice crackled over the comms. Ten minutes out, Holden. Ten minutes. Ten minutes before hell broke loose. I leaned back in my seat, feeling the weight of every damn battle we'd fought every friend we'd lost. But there was no time for sentimentality, not now. Veda didn't care about your past victories or your future dreams. All that mattered was the fight ahead. I glanced at the picture taped to the console, a reminder of why we fought. A woman with a smile that could light up the darkest corners of the universe. She was the reason I strapped into this metal coffin every damn day. The reason I fought like hell to come back in one piece. But tonight, I couldn't promise that. I tightened my grip on the controls, fingers tracing the scars etched into the metal. The tank rumbled beneath us, a beast ready to be unleashed. And on Veda, there were no heroes, only survivors. Brace yourselves, I muttered, the words lost to the howling wind. The countdown began, each second ticking away like a bomb waiting to explode. And explode it would. In ten minutes, we'd be knee-deep in alien blood, fighting for our lives in a place that didn't give a damn whether we lived or died. But that's war, ain't it? A never-ending cycle of blood and sweat and tears. And tonight, Veda would have its fill. The horizon shimmered with heat as we rolled into enemy territory. Veda's landscape stretched out like a dune of death, every dune a potential grave. We moved like ghosts in the night, our tank prowling the sand like a predator on the hunt. The comms crackled to life, Jackson's voice cutting through the static. Contact, 12 o'clock, enemy armor inbound. I squinted through the periscope, eyes fixed on the approaching storm. The alien tanks rolled in formation, their sleek frames cutting through the sand like knives through butter. They thought they had us cornered, but they didn't know who they were dealing with. Target acquisition now, I barked, adrenaline coursing through my veins.